All right, bet. Yeah, that's our two guys. Parlay Pete's taking the leak. And I kind of want to take one too, but I can't. So stick around for hour three. Hey guys, it's hour three. And my pen's not working right now, so I can't make the timestamp on my pad for hour freaking two. But uh, we're all good. Hour three, AC Lee Parlay Pete podcast, baby, baby, and uh, we do it for the culture. It's culture hour. We're going to talk about, what do we talk about in hour three? We got, we're going to talk a little bit of Johnny Football Doc, because that's more of a culture conversation. We're going to talk about Michael Orr, uh, conservatorship. Oh, damn. I hope Plum Dog ain't hurt. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on. Shannon Sharp coming to ESPN. Uh, some stuff that's going on with Undisputed. I'm going to apologize to uh, Stephen A. Smith. And we got some uh, relationship women stuff in here to talk about. So while we're waiting on Parlay Pete to come back, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to issue a an apology to Steve Smith of ESPN, a.k.a. Stephen A. Smith. Um... So I listened to him on podcast P, probably, uh, pa, uh, Paul George's podcast. And I've listened to a Breakfast Club interview or two. And what I've realized is I oftentimes take personal attacks on Stephen A. Smith. I don't know him. But I personally attack the information that he puts out. Because I don't necessarily agree with things that he does like i i think with him being one of the highest paid sports personalities but also being one of the hardest working sports personalities what he does is bad for the industry it's bad for the business because you're doing all this work and yes you're getting paid handsomely for it but you're setting a standard for other people in the industry to have to do as much as you do and a lot of what he's able to do is because he works at ESPN and the different rights that they have. Also, I disagree with some of his stances because he he he's he takes to the stance as a company man. And I beat him up for that sometimes. But when you listen to him talk as an interviewee, you get more insight into who he is and what he stands on. And as I listen to that conversation with Paul George, I go, yo, Stephen A's a solid guy, bro. He just does all this shit because he actually loves it. Like he, he wants to, he wants to do the work. He's, he's definitely doing it to, he's getting paid and he's accepting the payment that comes with it. But I don't think Stephen A is barely sleeping and doing get up first take his uh his podcast or what what's what was once a Stephen A show and then doing the pregame show and on the floor at post game not not because he has to it's because he he just wants to he loves the different things and I can't shit on another man especially another black man for doing what they love and Stephen A is great. Stephen A is a great black voice because of what he came, what he, what he, what he's done, what he's went through. You know, he did it as a as a beat guy, covering uh, Allen Iverson at, at Philadelphia in Philadelphia. He did it as a columnist. He parlayed that into a career at ESPN. They got got they got cut short. And then he went and did some other stuff. He comes back and he becomes the top dog at ESPN, although Troy and Joe make more money than him. Uh, but that might too now. True. But what Stephen A does is he's just good. He's good at what he does. And although I don't like what he does too often, he's still good and he's still advancing black people in America. So you want to know what it is too? He's the what? standard. He's actually the standard of what it is that he does. Yes. He's he the is, standard in that in that like realm of what he does. He's the actually the standard of it. 
he's the standard and he took what Skip Bayless made and he made it better. You know what I'm saying? Like Hennessy's not the original cone yet, but it's the most popular. Stephen A is the Hennessy to whatever that bum ass cognac y'all niggas be drinking. I don't really drink cognac, but What's wrong uh, with you said? it's not Hennessy. Oh, did you're fired? You're fired. Oh, did so. So I just want to apologize to Stephen A. He apparently he's building a media company now. Uh, hopefully it is independent of ESPN and ABC. So he's allowed to build it in the way that he wants to. But I just wanted to put that out there because I think it's super important that as you get more information and your views change, you should put that out there. You should admit that, that you're wrong because, Hey, yo, this is a public platform. And I, and I say what I feel in those moments when I say it. But when the feeling changes, I owe it to myself. I owe it to the person who I'm commenting on. And I owe it to the people who listen to this to say, hey, I think differently now. Here's what I think. So I'm just letting you all know. So, Stephen A., I apologize. What type of fucking backhanded apology was this? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> was it backhanded yeah kind of I mean I mean I'm still not gonna not watch really. first take. coming to coming to your show and 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 our show and making it you know making this humble ass apology to kick off our theory hey man it's called accountability unlike a lot of you women I try to hold myself accountable for things that I do and apologize. That's a joke. Well, Lizzo didn't think it was, but go ahead. Well, Lizzo's not the industry standard. She's the anomaly. <laughs> well, she won't maybe, apologize she, maybe, maybe she is the industry standard in the way that she treated her workers. Could be. But um, speaking of Stephen A, uh, ESPN announced that Shannon's going to be doing two days on uh, Undisputed. I mean, excuse me, on First Take. We kind of expected that after he left Undisputed. Does Shannon Sharp get you to watching a First Take clip? Absolutely. Certainly from the from the get go, because I'm I'm curious to see. You know how it would be the equivalent. I know. It's not that, but imagine how you have a play-by-play guy and a color analyst. Yep. It would be the equivalent because technically Stephen A, because Skip was has been the one driving the show, you're basically taking two color analysts to a degree, right? Like let's say they were both color analysts with Skip. Yep. But then Stephen A became a play-by-play, but at the same time now you're moving – Shannon over and he kind of would be a play by play too. I, I I try to make it make sense into how I'm trying to put it. I know what you're it's trying gonna, to say, and you're saying it poorly. Here, here's what I like about it is because Shannon is super Shannon's weird because he is a color analyst with play by play skills. Yes. And Stephen A is a play by play guy with some color skills. That's going to be, that's going to be great because I think you still get the personality stuff that they tried to capture with Michael Irvin, but Shannon gives better analysis when he decides to analyze. Like I, I, like I honestly think Shannon Sharp's one of the best football analysis or excuse me, football analyst that we have in sports media. Yeah. When he actually is analyzing football, you take his resume, but you also take the way he breaks down the game. It's absolutely amazing. And then you throw in the 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 character, the shit talking, the Uncle Shay Shay, all of that stuff. And you go, yeah, nah, Shannon 
Nah, Shannon is him. And I think that the format of him going to uh, first take just two days a week and working with Stephen A., he's going to be allowed to color his segments in a way that he likes, more so than supporting what Skip Bayless wants and then him He's going to get to draw some more lines. I feel like Stephen A is going to allow him to draw more lines than Skip did. Skip said, hey, here's the coloring book. Fill it in, nigga. There's that. And then another positive is that um, I think it's strategic that it's Monday and Tuesday specifically because with football season coming up, Monday he'll get they'll get to cover all the NFL from Sunday. Yep. And then uh, Tuesday they get to cover Monday night, right? So. Yep. Um, it kind of works out from that standpoint of getting all the football covered in those two days and pre also previewing the upcoming week. So it's, uh, it's a good move by ESPN. I'm curious as to what the contract's looking like. Well, honestly. it make, it, it's starting to make the layoffs make sense, right? Because here's what ESPN uh, uh, struggles with on their daytime talk. They don't have good players talking. Like the most accomplished player that ESPN has talking during the day, and this isn't even on some first take shit, is probably Richard Jefferson. Yeah, because they but they got because they got rid of so many of the other guys. Like if you if you're combining football and basketball, like Scott, think about Scotty Pippen used to kind of be on there a lot. Uh, well, Scotty Pippen wasn't good. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying he still was a guy. Like they got Randy I'm, Randy Moss. I'm, Randy Moss oh, was Monday night. He doesn't, do, he, doesn't do day, he doesn't do daytime. He does the Sunday, Monday oh, yeah, show. You're saying daytime, daytime, daytime. So, yeah, um, I, I'm looking at the daytime stuff, and I'm looking at when you take great player and also great TV personality, they've never had – they haven't had Shannon. Like, yes. Swagoo, Swagoo and Perk are good on TV, but they weren't great players. Right. Uh, what's my man's name? Uh, the lineman from the Patriots, Damon Woody. Yeah, I I like Woody. Pause. Uh, but he wasn't he wasn't a great player. Yeah. Marcellus Wiley, when he was there, he was good. He made some good money. But I mean, we talk about Shannon Sharp, three time Super Bowl champion, Hall of Famer. Retired as the Marcellus best tight end of all time. Marcellus huh? Wiley had such a unique. Marcellus Wiley had such a unique um, perspective. No, and I, I, I say that because he, he's from Compton, California, and he went to like Yale or something. Columbia, he and he Columbia. played in the NFL. What a unique like road. He to was. TV. And the crazy thing is, he was a he was a highly recruited prospect. He chose Columbia because he was choosing education first. And he was like, bro, I'm good. I'll still make the league. And he and he did. And he made money. Like he made a couple Pro Bowls. Yeah, he's a, a couple Pro Bowls he made too. But just such a unique uh perspective. And of course, you know, when he took over uh, for Colin at Sports Nation, do you remember the show Sports Nation with Michelle yeah. Beadle? And yeah. Colin Coward, how they start. It's I, I saw a video on YouTube that broke that down so nicely. They basically were like, when you look at it, Sports Nation was ahead of its time with all the polls and stuff and then incorporating like that trick shot shit that basically that shit kind of spawned that shit on YouTube and how people were doing that because it would get the notoriety by being on a show like that. And they had Colin Cowherd oddly enough doing it with Michelle Beadle. Then it switched from Beadle to Nichols. And then they brought in, uh, once Colin left to go to Fox, they brought in, um, Marcellus. Yep. But here's the thing. Here's the person too but here's the thing about colin and i you know i'm a huge colin fan like colin is yes absolutely hates him he I blocked can, him on he blocked him on instagram so that he wouldn't see his real spot <laughs> i can understand why somebody does not like colin because i don't like there are certain things that colin says that i don't like but i like colin's mind and they are making the game, by the way, go ahead. I, I'm watching, and I like the way, and I like the way. I, 
Colin is nobody is better by themselves than Colin. Maybe Bill Burr, but that's a totally different field, different commentary, different filter, a lot of other different shit that Colin's not doing. But somebody who can just sit there and talk to themselves for almost three hours and it be like worth listening to Colin is like one of the best to ever do it. Yeah. But if you also listen to the way Colin thinks and and he's forward thinking, he he keeps young people around him so he doesn't ever get too old. Like Colin says, Dak got the bag so the Cowboys can't pay for this. Does it sound corny with Colin's 50-year-old white ass saying Dak got the bag? Yeah. But the fact that he knows what the bag is and he incorporates yeah. that into his vernacular it lets you know that he's always learning. He's always trying to do the next step, you know? Yeah. So I, I appreciate that about uh, about Colin. Uh, but anyways, back to, to this whole thing. Uh, Shannon, and, Shannon and, and Stephen A is going to be great. It's going to be a lot of yelling. So if you're not into like real barbershop style talking, uh, you're not going to be into this. But, it, but, but I'm telling you, the ESPN said, hey, we've got to get st- we got to get talented people in here who drive an audience without without ESPN, without the shield, without the four letter network behind them. They got to get back to having talented people like they did in the days of Dan Patrick, uh, uh, Jim Rome, Colin Cowher, Bill Simmons, like. They go, yeah, Rich, no. You know, Rich Eisen was on ESPN too. Yeah, Rich Eisen. Like, we got to bring the talent back into the building. And I, I think want them to bring back thing. Stomp the Schwab. Huh? I want them to bring back Stomp the Schwab really badly. They're not going to, man. I've always wanted to be on that show. Like, you know, they. Uh, I like what ESPN did because I think keeping Dick Jeff was a good move. He's, he's, he's good. He's versatile. versatile. He can He's versatile. games. He can be in studio. My man even ref. He ref the G League game. I mean, he's as versatile as good. And he's played with a lot of important NBA players. Obviously, being on that Cavs team with LeBron, but he was also on that team with D Wade. Like he still played with those guys. Derrick. He played. He played with Steph when he was young. Yeah, he played with Steph. He, a Jason Kidd, of course, when early in his career, uh, he played in Dallas for a little bit too. If I remember correctly, he played it. So yeah, he played for so he Mark played Cuban, for the most colorful. Yeah, played with played for Pop, but Mark Cuban, most colorful and outspoken NBA owner. He played with him or on his team, like or whatever. Just a super duper interesting. He's an interesting. And he was a really good pro. He was a he wasn't great, but he was a good pro. He was he his best seasons. He was a borderline all star. I want to say he was on that 04 Olympics team too. Yes, he was. Yeah, so like he he he's good. JJ Reddick, good analyst, great career. He's good. Perk has some of the best relationships in in the league. And he said and a lot of dumb in high school. Yeah, he was. He was a top he was a top he was the best player behind LeBron James in that class. And Chris Paul was in that class. But he has a relationship with LeBron. He has a relationship with KD, Russ. He has a relationship with uh Paul, KG. Like he, it makes sense why they keep him. Jalen Rose's relationships have expired. And Jalen Rose, yeah, and Jalen and Jalen Rose didn't bring anything to TV. Like I mean, he he's funny. But like he wasn't. You, yeah, I keep forgetting you're talking straight daytime because I was like, I know you wanted to lean in on Mark Jackson's ass, but um, he's not daytime TV, so. Well, no, that yeah, no, but he, he still. Got, Mark, you know, you know, he got yeah, you stuff. get you. Yeah, you let Mark Jackson go. And we talked about this earlier, but you let Mark Jackson go because Mark Jackson stopped fucking good. Um, he he loses every coaching job. They, they did Mark Jackson a favor if Mark Jackson wants to be a coach because he's no longer saying dumb shit on TV every day. Uh, Mm -hmm. Van Gundy had to go because he was just too critical of the NBA and ESPN's in bed with the NBA because of their deals. So I understand why they let Jeff Van Gundy go. I thought Jeff was great. And I thought Jeff should, based on what he produces, he should keep his job. But based on the way he speaks about the NBA, I understand why 
he would get let go. Similar with Bill Simmons when he became super anti Roger Goodell. ESPN's like, yo, dog, you're driving up the price that we have to pay for the league because Bill Simmons was too homerish for me too. Well, that as a as a, broad, as a broadcasting dude, like I, obviously you know, I speak I speak so highly of his writing. I used to, I mean, as a kid growing up, when I would check ESPN, Grandland, I just I couldn't get enough of it. He was one of the best writers. I used to love reading his articles. Um, but no, I I, I like it, but I kind of want to talk about where Undisputed is going now. So they have Little Wayne. They have they have Little Wayne uh huh, coming in on Friday. They're gonna have a it's gonna look more like first take. They're gonna have Rachel Nichols a couple of days, uh, debate. They're gonna have Richard Sherman. They're in talks with Keyshawn and 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 Michael and and Michael um, Irvin Irvin playmaker. And I think those segments Cowboy segments are gonna be terrible. Uh, oh, it's gonna be one big. Uh... One big hot dog eating contest. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's going to be the Beyonce concert on steroids. Yeah, you know. Uh, or excuse me, the Beyonce concert after party on steroids. Yeah. Who knows? But, it could have been going in the bathroom in there. Say again? I said, who knows? It could That stuff could have been going on in the bathroom as far as we know. But, you know. That's, I'll I'll tell you, that's another story. <laughs> But I, I, I'll tell you, so a a a television personality from Fox uh, came out and had some comments about the direction of first take. Asia Wilson just got another bucket. And That's seven away. And here's the quote. This is it. This is literally copying exactly what ESPN is doing, and it will make a bad show worse. Rachel Nichols has never been a debater or given opinions. She's a great interviewer, so this is a classic miscast, said one TV talent who declined to be named. Another quote, Lil Wayne is Skip's barbecue buddy. Sherman has potential, but, but Keyshawn just got laid off by ESPN and is looking for his next gig. This shows me they're having trouble finding major talents to work with Skip. Well, there's not many Fox personalities who would even, I think, dare speak off the record about Skip with the fear of it, the name being put to them as far as in the media media company underworld. Mm -hmm. So you got to think it's a big dog. I'd say it's probably Colin uh, because he shits on debate TV on his own show. And um, I don't think Nick would do it because I do think there was another quote about like not bringing Nick right on. Nick Wright did. That's what I said. There was that rumor though that basically like that basically like he ref- like Skip Bayless refuses to have Nick Wright on his show. Nick did one one he did one he did one showing on uh Undisputed and he pretty much like trolled Skip. And yeah, I don't mean to do this, but this is why they need to have this on ESPN right now. Like, it's a good game. This has been a good game, and and like you didn't have to turn off the TV as soon yeah. as uh, the Aces went up a thirteen or fifteen, yeah. whatever they were up. And it's just like this is the issue with the WNBA. Nobody's fucking just on Amazon Prime. You had to come here and watch it and know. No, Asia, come on, don't get thrown out. It's not that serious. Um, but yeah, but anyways, back to back to the first take. Um, not first take, <laughs> undisputed. <laughs> the little Wayne thing is what's kind of funny to me. Who would have thought nobody had this on their big old card? Little Wayne getting a check from Fox. Did anyone see that coming? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, when, when I first when I first saw paycheck. When I first saw the rumor, I told y'all about it, and y'all shitted on me. Because it sounds ridiculous. I I get it makes sense. He already does the intro, and he is clearly, I guess, they are good friends. So it's like, it's, well, you don't you don't follow Skip on Instagram, but he goes to Lil Wayne's house every so often. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hey, you know this is a podcast, right? We're supposed to talk. I I know, I know. Look, uh, I, this is just my thought. I think that undisputed is going to be fine because I think Richard Sherman is going to be able to carry the team. To be completely honest with you, I think that he was literally the best hire they could get. I don't think that there would have been anyone that would have been a perfect like that is the perfect yin to the yang, in my opinion. A because of the history that we've already seen them before. Because Richard Sherman's not afraid to fucking obviously speak his mind, and he's going to check the shit out of <laughs> Skip Bayless. It's going to be great for TV. And he, the thing is, too, Richard Sherman's obviously an accomplished NFL player. Just as, yeah. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. I think he gets in. Yeah. He's not Shannon Sharp Hall of Fame level, in my opinion. Like, Shannon's one of the three – well, now he's kind of getting knocked down, but basically one of the three best tight ends ever. Uh, certainly top five. I don't know if Richard Sherman's a top five corner ever. And so, uh, but he's he's also a Stanford graduate, which he he let Skip know that as well. <laughs> he said, well, you address me, you address me as all pro Stanford graduate, <laughs> Richard Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because, bro, that is what is going to make that shit so much better. Like shit like that yeah. is going to make that show, you know. Now, and like I said, I don't know how Rachel Nichols is going to, uh, get into it, or how little Wayne realistically is going to get into it. But um, you know, Wayne's a big sports head. Yeah, but you know, Wayne is also someone. I remember him saying something about spitting in Mark Cuban's mouth or some shit. Do you remember that? He like tweeted at him once. How is Fox going to deal with that type of stuff when 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 Wayne does that type of stuff? You know, obviously his music is one thing, right? I guess technically because he'll say cash Ooh. money. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey. Bad girl. Who's who's better, Inescu or uh, Plum? Who do you want? And uh, what, what what do I want them to do? Put put the ball in the hole. <sighs> if we're talking to basketball, I'm going to go Inescu. Okay. I mean, what else would I have been talking about? There's only one ball you can put in the hole. That's true. Can, can we get Asia Wilson some touches? Nope. Somebody's about to jack a shot. Yeah. Blue face, baby. But, yeah, no. Um, I don't think I'm going to get seven points in six minutes. I think Dick Sherman is, is a great fit with Skip because his media personality is not big enough yet for him to want the creative control over the show. He'll color in Skip's lines, but he'll he will he will make a hell of a picture once Skip does the outline, right? Right. Uh because I think that was the hard thing about it is Skip wants to do the show his way and he and Fox is like, well we're tied to you, dude. Like, yeah, we can't we can't, we can't allow anybody else to just like step in. Anymore. We can't allow no. anybody else to step in and and kind of y'all build the show together. No, it has to be Skip Show or Skip doesn't want to do it. So I think Sherman's in a good spot where he has enough money that if he doesn't like it after after his contract is over, he can walk away. But at the same time, like he can be really good and he can build himself up. Uh, so. I, I like Dick Sherman. I look forward to hearing what Wayne has to say on a Friday. But I just don't know how it's gonna how is it gonna flow? Like I'm I'm subscribing from the we've, podcast. We've seen him as a guest. He's been a guest on first take and undisputed before. So yeah. I guess it would be like that. But I mean, I just this little I, I get he's a sports fan. I get that. How much time does he I mean I'm, he's rich, so I guess he's got plenty of time, but because he certainly doesn't really make music like that anymore, right? Like he doesn't really—he skateboards all day. I guess watches sports, but um, yeah, I'm sure he still because he does it right, right? So I'm sure he still raps a little. But I don't—I don't know. I mean, of course, people want him on features still. You know, Here's I guess still. concerts maybe. Yeah. So He's yeah, the well, worst to see in concert. Yeah, I know. I've been. It's terrible. 
Yeah, so we'll see where that goes. Um, but keeping it in sports and people that Skip Bayless likes, Johnny Manziel. We watched the Johnny Football Doc. Um, great watch, man. It, yeah. Brought out a lot of different feelings, um, one of which Cliff Kingsbury should not be anybody's head coach ever again. Uh, I don't think mm-hmm. he – I don't think Cliff Kingsbury knows anything about accountability and, and setting a standard. Uh, Johnny football is a, is a, is a prime example of what happens when you don't let your daughter go to parties and hang out with boys. She goes to college and she fucking loses her shit. He went from a very stern high school football program where everybody dressed the same, looked the same, act the same, got to Texas A uh, and uh, which hadn't been great in a very long time. And he gets good really quickly and he wilds out. And it it appeared that Kevin Sumlin was not on board with the Money Manziel shit. But he was, I mean, what the fuck do you do? This, this guy's good. He's winning games, you know? Yeah, he's winning, he's winning a ton of games. Give me one second, Lee. I'm sorry. No, you're good. And, and here's what I think. Johnny needed strong parameters, but he didn't have them. After his crazy freshman year where he won the Heisman, he became so popular that what do you do? Like all everybody who's anybody wants to hang out with him. I remember um New Year's 2014. So 2013 going to 2014. They played in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. And Boink's cousin was 2 chains manager at the time. Right. And Johnny had reached out to him and was like, hey, what chains got going on tonight? And we were supposed to go party with Manziel, but Boink was underage, and he didn't want to try to uh, finesse being too young and getting turned away. So, so yeah, Johnny was just out here lit. And... What I'll tell you is when you see somebody who's partying hard all the time, it is oftentimes a cry for help. And Johnny was crying for help, but at, at AM, he was making so much money, he was winning games that no one's looking at it that way. They're they're just like Johnny's being Johnny. And then finally he talked about how he was pretty much living until it's over, and then he was gonna off himself and it didn't happen that way. Uh, so at one point, Johnny becomes a sympathetic figure of, man, this dude just needed someone to actually love Hell. him. And, yeah, and he needs to be accountable. Then also you go, dang, this dude just didn't love the game. Like you had the world at your hands and you didn't just grab it. And another part goes, damn, bro, this race shit is real. We took Reggie Bush's Heisman, but Johnny Football got his. And Johnny Here Football, is, Asia. and Johnny Football is still up because the name Johnny Football still makes money. And yeah, dog, I don't know, bro. It, it it took me in a lot of different places. I thought it was. I enjoyed. I enjoyed watching it. But yo, that nigga Johnny was funny. And that was the. Uh, I'm trying to think was. Cause that's it's a series, right? So there's no, the Florida thing is gonna be on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I it's all under one. It's all yeah, under yeah, one, yeah. one and bro. That was the first episode of that series of 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 this year. Yeah. The, hey, I heard the yeah. So Sean, you know Sean, who's been in the pod with us, he's seen the Florida when he said it's wild. Yeah. I can't wait. I mean, that's got to be the most. What the most. Uh, polarizing college football team of all time. You know, just from a Tebow, right, Cam Newton's on the team. Like, bro, there's so many. Percy Harvin is, you could argue, probably the best football player on the team. Like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, Tebow is, you know, God's uh, son. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, Plum Dogs. You got a, you got a, uh, you got a murderer on the team. Like, you know, it's like a lot going uh, on. You're not, not a murder, you have a serial killer. You, well, right. Yeah, not just a murderer, somebody that, that, that went on a spree. 
killed multiple people, and then obviously off to himself eventually, right? Yeah. That is the one I'm really looking forward to. But the Johnny Manziel one was good. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought the wildest story was the the night before partying and the receivers being too drunk to show up and him getting his agent and attorney to line up and catch passes for an NFL team <laughs> to come and watch. I thought that that was honestly just insane. And they um, still drafted him. The Cleveland Browns are a fucking shit show. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, that one was just that, – that one was pretty much the most interesting thing that I took away from it. But, yeah, I mean, like you said, he was definitely somebody that clearly was kind of crying out for help. And – the fame just kind of hit him in the face a little bit faster uh, probably than he expected. And nobody around him really could grasp that or understand like the position that he's in and how this is affecting him. And then of course, you know, there's the Drake aspect of it too. You know, you're talking about the biggest rapper slash pop star at the time is like Bro, saying was- you're, you're a part of OVO. You're basically, you are OVO too. Like, you know, that's that's a lot to handle at 20 years old. He gets 19 years up old. With, he gets linked up with Braun then once he gets to Cleveland. Yeah, nah, it's I, yeah, Johnny. Yeah, dog. I I think a lot of people want to go shit on Johnny, but not not many people get that famous that fast and and how do you handle it the man had to take online classes because he couldn't go to class the fanfare was so crazy we're talking dream team barcelona 92 type shit every Mm -hmm. fucking day like he's in college station and he's the biggest thing in – he's one of the biggest things in the country. Didn't uh, – and George Bush was at his uh, pro day, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, G- George uh, – not George Bush, George H.W. Yeah, Daddy Bush. But, like, what do you – Yeah. Wh- I don't know how you handle that fame. And I'm less critical of Johnny – because I don't think he did as bad of a job of it as people want to make it out to be. Because when you are 19 years old and you become that big of a hit, it's not like he's a child star who's kind of prepped for it. Mm-hmm. The football player who just got wildly popular. I, I don't know. What do you do? Well, it, I guess it kind of got his handled as well as it could have. I mean, obviously, if he was going to kill himself and he didn't, there's the silver lining in it, right? Um, yeah. But certainly, uh, it's a tale. And if anything, it's, it's a good way that you could tell the story because there are so many more kids that are actually getting more famous before they even do that. I mean, think about the Mikey kid, right, that's going to Memphis this year. I feel like that kid's been famous for like five years. And like <laughs> – you know, he wasn't even in McDonald's All-American, but, like, he's more popular than the guys that were on the team. And I'm sure – I'm guessing I'm guessing he's going to go to the league, I guess. I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't followed uh, the high school basketball circuit that much. I've, I've, watched, I've watched Mikey clips, but similar to Johnny, he has a game that is working on a lower level. I don't know if it's going to work in the league. I haven't seen the shot. Yeah. Seen a lot of nice dunks, dude. You're a six-two guard. You're not. You're not dunking on everybody's head when you get to the league. I'm anti Mike Williams, by the way. Like I, I'm not a fan. I, I, I hope it works out for him, but I, I don't like the mentality. I don't like the personality. Like I've seen some dunks and the, and the standover. And I, I'm not into Mikey. I think Mikey's into Mikey yeah. more. So talk about Johnny versus Reggie Bush. Do you do you think that white privilege played into Johnny being able to maintain his Heisman and the fact that he was taking money, receiving benefits, 
same way Reggie was, but they painted this false story of his of his family coming from crazy money. So that explained him affording his lifestyle. Certainly, privilege would pay, play a role in that because then it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's believable. You know what I mean? Like it makes it it makes it more believable, and that is how the credibility can come from that, right? Like it's credible because, well, it's not surprising. Right. So that's the privilege in it, because it's like, well, it's not surprising that this kid, he's a white kid, he's a quarterback and his parents have money. Like, you know what I mean? Like it it, it makes it so much more credible. So, yeah, I think that the privilege definitely plays a role in that. But at the same time, it's different eras, too. I mean, Reggie Bush. If you saw Reggie, because what did Reggie, what did they say he was driving? I know LeBron it was Le, with LeBron, LeBron's who had a Hummer, right? Like in high school, mm -hmm. what did they give Reggie Bush? What did Reggie Bush have? I know he got the money, but didn't they give him like a car too? He had like a car. He got a house. I think his parents got a house and he got like a car or some shit. Yeah. Back then, think about the paparazzi in 2004 versus social media 2016, where it's easy to see an 18 year old whipping a fucking Benz. And I'm not even talking about today, but even just 20, yeah. what was that, 2016, I guess. Would that have been 2016? It was while we were in college, so 2013, 2014. Oh, 14, yeah, okay. But the birth of Instagram, where yeah. everybody's sharing all this personal information about themselves, it seems even more believable like that, too, if they're putting it out. Reggie did not want that to be seen in reality. No. The paparazzi he, he, just fucking found it. And he was in – you got to think about this, too. He was like in L.A. It. versus him being in College, college Station. Too. I mean, they're two different things. And USC – being the football program that it was versus, like you said, Texas A&M was kind of an afterthought to begin with. I think that they're just – they're two different time periods and two different parallels. But, yes, I still think that the white privilege thing certainly helped his case for this to be able to get by, and now he can tell the story and but not really face any consequence. I really hope they yeah. give Asia Wilson this ball if he shoots the three. Here's another thing that I pulled from the, the Johnny Manziel doc. Give me the AM1. That I told All right, I need one more point from uh, Asia. One more. She's got 19. I need one more. Damn, I just totally forgot what I was going to say. Fuck. Uh, football, Johnny Manziel. Oh, yeah. Dog. Johnny Manziel needed NIL. Like, real NIL. Not this fake-ass NIL. This pay-for-play NIL. Johnny Manziel should have been able to profit off his name, image, and likeness. I don't think Johnny Manziel did anything wrong by accepting the benefits that he received. All right, guys. Technical difficulties. Oh, bike. Bike. Uh, but what I was saying is Johnny Manziel was a real guy who deserved real NIL money because he actually had a name, an image, and likeness that was profitable. Not like some of these guys who go to that same school that he went to. And are getting paid to play. Uh, and also, as much as great as NIL is, college players deserve to get paid. Like yeah. Johnny Manziel was producing money for Texas AM like no other. And he deserved to get a piece of that profit. It's not like he went to Texas, Oklahoma, Georgia, Alabama, Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, USC. He didn't go to a school. He didn't go to like the biggest school in the state, the biggest school in his fucking conference, a big uh, one of the biggest schools in the nation. He went to school and he 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 gave them, he gave them a lot, and he deserved to be uh, paid for that. And you hit your bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm jumping for joy over here. Isn't that crazy? She had no points in the first quarter. And she cleared. But like I told you, I had said, that's why I was like, bro, if she can get like eight in the first, if she can get eight in that second quarter, I was like, I have a chance. Uh, yeah. But yeah, she cleared. But that's because she got the 11. She did 11 in the second quarter, and then she just got 11 here in the second half. Or 10, actually, in the second half. Considering how shitty she kind of played a little bit, I, I'm satisfied. But, you know, they just weren't feeding her the ball, bro. It was just like, what the fuck's going on? No, they're not. Um, Michael Lore, 
apparently uh signed over his life to his uh his quote unquote adopted parents who never officially adopted him and uh yeah. now he's trying to get his get back and he also has a book that's about to come out so Do you think Michael Lord just found out recently that he was getting hosed or he's just trying to sell a book? Uh, I don't think he found out recently. This feels like something he's known about. I don't know when he would have found out, I guess, because the thing is, you got to think about it. I know when that movie came out, was he had just got drafted, I think. It wasn't too far off. I mean, he had just been drafted. He was a first-round pick, so he got pretty – good money, a fully guaranteed contract. And then I know he ended up getting a second contract in the league. And then that was pretty much it. He was out of the league after that. But yeah. um, I don't know if maybe it could have been one of those situations where he was making the money. He, because he was rich already, he just kind of was like, whatever, like, and didn't think about it. And then now, because he's probably been out of the league for what, five or six years. Yeah, probably. And money could have dried up, and, you know, he already knew he had the story because, you know, he's, um, you know, it's his story. So he knew he had that story, and so he's like, well, I can write a book on it, the actual, the real tell-all story, because I'm who this is really about. And I think it's a ploy to sell more copies of the book, but then also um, – if in fact it is true, because like I mean, who's to say it's not even true, right? Yeah, it's a fucked up thing. It and and now it's gotten like uh, uh, Sandra Bullock involved. Like people are like threatening her. Like there's like a lot of stuff. which is stupid. Like Sandra but, Bullock is the actress who did her job, right? Who was given a script? Yeah, and she played it. She didn't know anything really about them, even though I guess they were hands on in the process of the movie. But she still didn't know. Like she didn't know about that. You know, no, poor her rich ass. <laughs> hey, you know what? Poor, poor, or hopefully he gets paid, right? Fuck him. He already rich. I don't care, <laughs> nigga. Nigga, your your agent should have known. <laughs> he that should have been the first question he asked. He said because he knew who you were because of that shit too. And I mean, obviously, he was a pretty productive player. I guess at Ole Miss, but. You know, still. Hey, so question for you. Fuck, Mary kill. <laughs> Sukiyana, sexy red, Glorilla. Kill them all. Ah, future Wolfgang, nigga. Um, I saw this when you sent it. What is this mess, Lee? Just answer the question. I'll I'll get you where we're going. All right. Truthfully, let me see. Hold on. Who are we talking? Okay, it's so I don't know who Suki. Huh? I I don't really know who that is. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I know I know who she is. She's the chick from the video where the dude went and like kissed her, right? Yeah. That's really the only thing I know about her. Uh, I've never hey. heard her music. Like I I couldn't man. If somebody put the gun in my head and said, name a song or a lyric even, I would say I, because I'm hoping she said it in a song. So I'm going to have to kill her because I just don't even know who she is, really. Okay. Um, hmm. Fuck Glorilla. Mary sexy red. Okay, so we agree a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill Sukiana because I don't know her or care about her. I'm gonna marry Glorilla. I'm gonna fuck sexy red. Um all right, so why did I bring this up? Right? That's what you that's what you're trying to figure out, right? Well, I I see where it stems from, you know, little Duval. Yeah, I, I might get into that piece. So we had a conversation in pre-production about about 
maybe we didn't have it in pre-production. Maybe we talked about it in the group text. Uh, we talked about the group text. Um, introduction to your daughter to female rap or rap mm-hmm. in general. What happens when your daughter asks you, how come we don't listen to girl rappers, daddy? And what direction do you think you go when that happens? Because there's not much positive female rap out there that's easily available and it's not promoted. Whereas, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, there's a bunch of degrading women in rap. There's a bunch of drug dealing, scamming, stealing in, in, in male rap. But there's also Kanye. Yo, know, there's even Drake. Like, Drake ain't. I hate calling the women bitches, but the bitches love it. I mean, so. You, you got some of that, but you also, a lot of Drake songs you can play for your kid. Like, you can play God's plan for your kid. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like now, like, like I, I've, I've introduced my daughter to Kanye because Kanye makes a lot of music. Yeah, it has cursing in it, but, I, but we, we curse. But he has a lot of music that is kid friendly without me having to listen to fucking kids box. I'm not listening to damn kids box. Right, you can play all the lights. That's, that, that's, that's like, that's Lowe's favorite song. Yeah. So you, you can play all the lights. You can you can play anything on Donda for the most part. Um, yeah. So you can play I wonder. Like you know, what I mean, these are songs that are time. Even Big Brother. Like yeah, like, like, they, like there's a lot of songs. He has a lot in his catalog that is Hey Mama. Like bro, you can play. There's a ton of songs you can play. Yeah, like it, it is. Yeah, exactly. The content of his songs is stuff that you can play for a child. So what happens when your 10, 12-year-old right, wants to listen to girl rap? Are you going to start bumping Rhapsody? No. And, you know, like like how we kind of have the, 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 the root of this conversation coming from that, um, us talking about this kind of the group chat, I think that the biggest thing for me was, like I said, you know, as it stands today, it's going to be more of something I'm going to just let her kind of find out on her own. Of course, you know, when she's in the car with her dad, she's going to listen to it. But if the question even had ever come up, you know, I would say, honestly, this is, this is be my honest to God truth to her. Cause it's the truth. I just be like, there isn't really any as of today, just based on today. Cause there could be a female rapper that comes out in two years. It's great that I do like I'm just gonna tell her I'm like there really aren't that many great female rappers I said I can play you some Nicki Minaj that I like <laughs> but like you know outside of that you know um there there there's just not that many great ones to where I listen to it more you know that's why you haven't heard me bumping it because there aren't really any that I like you know to be completely honest with you um and then I'll proceed to play her. I'll say, now there are songs that I do like, and I'll throw on like Moment for Life or something for her, right? I'd be like, this is a great song. I remember when I was in high school, my mom got me an iPad, and it was the first song I heard on there when I downloaded Pandora. And from there, I liked the song. I was like, this is a great, it's a great album. You know, I'll play some... Um, some songs maybe from the miseducational Lauren Hill that I like. Like, you know what, what I about mean? This? All right, all right. I'm sure. You You gonna play this one? Yeah. No, probably not. Like I said, I like this though. You know what I mean? But this is just good bullshit. You know what I mean? Now this shit's hard to me. But you know You gonna play this, you gonna play this one for? No, because I don't even, I don't even, I don't listen to Lotto now. Man, I don't listen to Lotto at all. What about this one? You know I don't listen to Glorilla. No. Well, you know, I'm going to stay as far away from them. 
<laughs> That's possible. Give a fuck. Back and I think that this one, because the beat is so nice, you know, it's something like it's on my, you know, it's in my stuff, you know, because the beat yeah. is so nice. The beat's really nice on that song. And so, you know, I, you know. I think. I think this puts us in like a tough situation, especially if we got daughters like looking about like equity and like female representation, woman representation. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna show you some holes in my misogyny. I, I don't <laughs> listen. To, hey, I don't listen to that shit. And like this yes, ratchet, sh- and like the ratchet shit that I like and I listen to, listen to it when you're older. When you can appreciate the entertainment value the same way I appreciate the busting jugs Gucci man for the entertainment value, but I never wanted to hit a lick. I never wanted to kick a dough. Exactly. And that's why, like I brought up to you, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you can listen to it on your own. You will figure it out on your own. Because that's kind of how it was for me in general. I mean, like I said, I grew up, you know, listening to Jay-Z and Nas. But that's because that's what my older brothers played. And more specifically, Jay-Z. But there was there was Nas played, too. Nas was in rotation. And, you know, that started kind of my journey into even hip-hop. And, of course, like I said, the radio had its influence, too. Like I said, one of the songs that I'll never forget just growing up hearing so much was sorry, Miss Jackson. Like, because that song was always on the radio, it felt like for me when I was like six years old. You know what I mean? I never forget it because the beat is so, you know, Outcast is just so different. But like, um, it's one of those things where I feel like she'll be able to find her own lane. Hell, she might not like rap. I hope that that's the case, to be completely honest with you, with the direction that it's headed in. Like, okay. You know, I can't even imagine because, okay, I I tell you what, I look at like my niece. My niece is a great representation. This is somebody that I saw born. Literally, I saw her the first day she came to my mom's house, like my parents' house. Uh And now she's 18 years old. So, like, I've got to see her life, basically. And I'm still young enough, too. I'm not old like that. Like, you know what I mean? I'm 12 years older than her, but I'm not old like that. And so, she listens to a lot of the stuff that I listen to, right? She's a huge Drake fan. She's one of those people. She likes Drake. Okay. And so, but she's also somebody that's attracted to Drake. So it's like, and I feel like she doesn't really listen to, at least not tell you, she hasn't done it around me. She doesn't really, she likes Travis Scott. You know what I mean? Amigos, that type of stuff. But like okay. she does I've never heard her even, she knows about it, of course, right? You know, she doesn't live in a box, but like, I've never even heard her mention, you know, female rappers, like in general, even, even a Nicki Minaj and Nicki Minaj is not before her time, but in my opinion, her hits and stuff, her, her, her prime of of her career, she was probably too young to really listen to, you know, she was, cause she was like seven, (laughs) you know, but Uh um, no, I don't, but but it also is who gives who the ball. And I think that the reason why Nicki Minaj obviously could rap too, but like the reason why even somebody like her is so popular, aside from the fact that she is talented, is that she got the right promotion around her. And she made a lot, a lot of her music wasn't like that. Like what what's coming out today, your Cardi B's. Like her, her music like hers either. When you really think about it, it it's not you know, she has the songs where she does that, but like a lot of her hits, she's not doing that. Like these girls' hits are doing that. That's what they're talking about in their hit songs. Nicki Minaj's hit songs aren't really that. Not not er- not the earlier stuff it isn't. Like, yeah, I get it, Anaconda, right? We know exactly what the fuck she's talking about. But like her earlier stuff, the hit songs, they weren't like that. Starships, yeah. nigga, like that's not, that song is not talking about that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, moment for life. Uh, life not talking about that. Uh, Super Pace. Yeah, these songs aren't talking about that. So yeah, man, you know, didn't talk about that. I just want to just put it out there because I think it's going to be a interesting thing that 
we are going to encounter over the next 10 to 12 years, you know? And yeah. how, do, how does that look? You before me, Jew next week, or Julian Turner next week, you know? Yeah, he, but you know, even when he did, when he chimed in and he had said what he said regarding it, you know, and his daughter's 10, so like, this is kind of that age. Mate. I see she probably has a phone. And that's another thing, the errors. Yeah. Like, she probably has a phone, bro. I didn't get a phone, a, a for real my phone, until ninth grade. So, yeah. I don't, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that is totally different. Like, I'm 14, 15 years old when I have a cell phone. She might have had one at eight because my little brother has one. Like, he has a phone. So, and he's going to be turning nine in September. So, and I think that's what, that's what my dad got for his eighth birthday. I'm just like, damn, pop. I was like, things have changed, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, no, but hey, I think this is a great closing point. The other topics that we have, they're, they're not dated, so we can talk about it whenever. Yeah. And, uh, cause I'm sleepy. I'm, I'm with you, brother. I'm totally All here right. with you. All right, man. Another great episode. We'll we'll get this shit cut up and upload it tomorrow morning. Uh, do it again next week. Let's do it again next week, and we're gonna do the college football stuff. College football, yeah, yeah. We'll talk. Um, preview we'll that. You know, kind of we'll, give some predictions. We'll probably go hour Cause, one. Because think about it, this, is, this is. Yeah, this is this is gonna be the last. Uh, season of college football as we know it in reality. Yeah. The 12-team playoff starts the following year. The alignment begins pretty yep. much for everybody next year. So this will be our last year of normal college football as we know it. So yeah, it'll man. be interesting to give it a preview. Yeah, no, that'll be a good show, man. Make sure y'all tune in. We look forward to seeing y'all rate, review, subscribe, like, comment, all of that stuff, man. Thank you for your support. Hey, thanks, Parlay Pete. Dog, I'll see you next week. All right, AC Lee. Weezy out of here.